Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian here with another video for 5 Minute Fridays. In this one, we're actually gonna cover the five minute countdown itself. So strap yourselves in and let's get started. So this video is gonna look a little bit different, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna walk you through the expression and rather than just doing a tutorial. So let's go ahead and blow this up real quick so we can look at this. At first glance, this looks pretty complex, but honestly, it really isn't. All this is is just taking a 60 second timer, multiplying it by five times, and then getting the seconds information out of it and the minute information out of it, and then putting it all together at the end, and then creating zeros and placeholders where we need placeholders. There are always a thousand ways to do a process. This is just one of many ways. So really quick, let's just walk right through it and I'll explain what's going on. Right off the bat, we want to set variables. So all of this right here is just setting variables and parameters. This is the expression itself, okay? It's very important that you understand what a parameter or a variable is when you create strings because this is how you're gonna be able to compute your values using expressions if you're new to expressions. So we're gonna create a parameter up here called rate of speed and just assign a value of one to it. We're gonna create a clock start time and we're actually gonna assign a value uh, created by a slider. That way we have control. So what this does is it says, hey, uh, create a slider and then add minutes to that slider and then we'll just times it by 60 for seconds. So if it's one minute, 60 seconds, two minutes, 120 seconds, and as you can see up here, I have five minutes put in on my slider, just a simple expression control. Uh, and it's a, I increase this all the way up. As you can see, it's just increasing all the way up. Okay, let's say I wanted to do 5.5, it'll go to five minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, so for this tutorial, just doing five minutes. Now, the next one I wanna create is what's called the clock time number. Now, this is where I start to lose people because they immediately they see the word math First of all, don't be scared when you see math. Almost everything we do in After Effects is math driven. When you set a keyframe and another keyframe, the computer's doing math for you, but you are launching the operation. So we are always using math. There's no reason to be afraid of it. If you failed it in high school, if you're failing it right now in school, take a breath, calm down, okay? One of the focuses of my channel is to get to break this barrier uh, that math is, is not existent outside of high school. We use calculus every day without realizing it when we're operating in After Effects. So let me show you guys this real quick. This is math floor. Basically what math floor is, it's a rounding operation. It's gonna set a floor and we don't want our values. Let's say we have half of one. Well, what'll end up happening is it'll go to either zero or one, depending on the weight we give it. To show you how this works, let's come over here, and I'm just gonna simply take this math floor operation off. I'm gonna backspace, click over here, and now what will happen is if I hit play, we gonna get all these decimal places and we don't want them. So what this math floor operation is doing is capital M period, lowercase floor, is it's just creating a floor saying, hey, I have 55, let's wait to change until we get to 54, then 53. We don't need to add decimal places. They're there, they're being computed, but we don't need to show it to the viewer. We don't need to put it on screen. So that's what the math floor operation is doing for us. Inside the math floor operation, we're taking this variable right here, we created this string, clock start time, which is our slider, which is all it is, is 300 in this case. So 300 is where we want the clock to start. And then we're gonna minus it by the time. Basically, we're just taking one times the time. Now, since we set a rate of speed of one, it doesn't matter. But let's say we want to double the time. We want this clock to go twice as fast. We just go two. And to show you guys what happens, so if I go to 15, it's down to 30 already because the clock is counting down faster. And this is the second part where I lose everybody. And this is the function part. Basically, all we're doing, this is how we create the spacers, okay? If I were to take this out, what would end up happening is it would go from 10 to nine and we'd lose the zero nine. All this is saying is that if you're under 10, we want the zero in front of the number. N stands for number. In this case, it's just a variable we created. The parameter is add zero or the string, um, and you'll see it down here. That's all we're doing. All add zero is, is one of these up here, but we have to put it in a function so that when these occur down here, the clock knows what to do, okay? And then we create two more, just like with the, and just like with the overall clock, we wanna put a floor on the minutes. We don't want going, oh, 5.5 minutes, 5.4, whatever many minutes, right? So all of this is is taking math floor and then we need the number of seconds here, okay? To be divided 
by the minute. So we know there's 60 seconds in a minute. If you live on Earth, you know this. There's 60 seconds in a minute. So all we do is just take the clock time number, which we created right here, and we divide it by 60. Uh, all this stands for is remainder. So whatever is left of 60, we want to see. Whatever is outside of 60, we don't need because it's already been oper it's already been handled by the minutes. Okay. And when you think about it, that's what seconds are. They're just the remainder of the minutes. So, you know, five, if we're going down, so five minutes, 30 seconds has 30 seconds remaining in the five minute mark, right? So that's all that is. That's what the percentage sign stands for here. Over here, we have the actual expression. And all we simply need to do here really is just create an if then conditional expression that's gonna operate for us. And all it says is, hey, if you are greater than zero, but you have time on it around five, clock start time set by the parameter up here, Let's use this appearance, okay? Let's put the minutes, a colon, and then the seconds using the variables set up here in the function and these strings. If you are at zero, let's just put it simply as this. You don't need a fancy operation as that. And that's it. That's the whole expression. So if you guys wanna see me recreate this, just let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this expression. Maybe you have a cleaner and more efficient way to do this. I would love to hear it and see it, uh, but this is how I do it. This is what I think is clean. I have the most control. So until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video. I can't stop time for you.